Welcome to Sculpture Studios. It's one of those projects where we get to work with a local school here in our hometown of Basildon. The De La Salle School held an internal design competition for a piece of sculpture to celebrate their 50 year anniversary and to incorporate their school values and well, a winner was chosen. Though this is originally intended to be an outdoor piece of sculpture, hence the really enthusiastically scaled up versions here, this is actually going to be created a lot smaller and most likely going to be kept inside in the school reception area, perhaps being moved outside at a later date. The winning design is this blue and white form right here by student David Awaiten, which, perhaps unbeknownst to David at the moment, is actually going to be brought from the page from his concept into the 3D world. Hi there, I'm Aidan Hines from Sculpture Studios, Basildon in Essex. Uh, been commissioned to make this piece for De La Salle School. Yeah, I think it's a, a nice trophy looking piece with this twisting form, 3D form going round and that's handed, so it's both sides with the star hanging from the centre. What I'm going to be doing here is make a post that's upright uh, and create in clay here, take a mould and then a cast and it just gets it in my own head. I'm taking it off the page and into 3D and in a small format and it's easier to make things at this stage as regards to when it's three metres tall. And I can make small these alterations uh, and changes while it's at a very small stage. And that's the idea, uh, the idea of a maquette. So here we go. As this concept is based only on a 2D image at the moment, there's no 3D file to reference or an existing version to copy, a maquette just helps Aidan get his head around the form that he's going to be carving at full scale. Being modelled from a water-based clay, the maquette is actually going to be moulded and then have a cast made, both to use as a reference as well as a gift for David, once he finds out that his sculpture is actually being made of course. Even when working on a small scale like this, things like the idea of using a rod as a centre post will help inspire the construction of the full version. Not only is it an easy way to keep track of where the centre should be, it also provides stability during the polystyrene carving. In terms of the design of the piece, a feature that was apparent in a couple of the finalist drawings was the Lasalian star, which will hang down in the centre of the sculpture. The star is a symbol of the De La Salle brothers, by which the core principles are respect for all people, faith in the presence of God, concern for the poor and social justice, an inclusive community and quality education. And I mean, any education establishment that commissions a piece of sculpture from us, well, you are quality. Pieces of the cubist shape are first cut from polystyrene using our hot wire table. The design is so that each side is basically an identical form, simply rotated around the clock 180 degrees. It's beneficial to block out identically at this stage to give us the best head start on uniformity on both sides. It's one of those projects where, for absolute accuracy, you could have something like this 3D CNC cut from polystyrene, but this would require a 3D file to be created, and let's face it, you guys would miss out on all the hand carving goodness. Aiden's using nail and wire brushes to refine the form, which will later be sanded down to a smoother finish. The design here has been streamlined a little to be less wide at the base so that this can serve as an indoor piece of sculpture in the early days of its life.
When the polystyrene form is complete, we protect the surface with our secretly sourced sticky back tin foil. Naturally, you can drop us an email to inquire about this magical product if you'd like to try it out, but until then, no, 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 you look with your eyes, no touchy. This protects the form from the resin going on top for the layers of glass fibre. As a one-off piece of sculpture, we're not creating a mould, but instead we're going to be manually working up the finish over the top of the blanket coat. Remembering that the pole is simply being used as a central locator and a support while the sculpture is being made, and this isn't going to be there for the finished piece. This means that the glass fibre, particularly at the top of the sculpture where it gets very thin, needs to be applied significantly thicker to ensure that everything is strong enough. To lose that fiberglass matte texture, we're going over with a combination of resin flow coats and fillers, sanding it back and repeating the process to end up with a significantly smoother result. Sometimes blitzing over with power tools creates unintentional flats in the surface, so Aidan often prefers going over by hand to get a better feel for the undulations, the rises and falls, and where to concentrate the work on. I mean, it's either that or we had a power cut or something, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the first one. <laughs> female mould has been constructed for a base plinth to be created from glass fibre. This is to provide the sculpture with something to sit on, whereby lettering can then be added to the bottom. If you've seen any of our other one-off projects, like the horse we created for the Garzington Opera, you'll know that working up a blanket coat like this to a decent finish takes a lot of time. Not that we're aiming to get this to quite the gloss finish as the black horse suitable for the opera, but we're still conscious that wherever we're creating sculpture for, it's still treated with the same attention to detail across the board. We routinely prime the surface to see if there are any imperfections that still need working on, and to create a base layer for the artwork once everything surface-wise is complete. We use car body fillers for any small areas that still require attention and reprime ready for the colour. We're using 2K car body paints for a durable finish, particularly if this does eventually end up outside. Brackets are being created for the underside of the base, so that this can be staked or bolted down to whatever surface or platform it's placed on. Work is now being started on the Lasalian Star, which is being cut and carved from polystyrene, having a quick plaster mould taken in two parts and a glass fibre cast created. We're adding a little metalwork to the top of the sculpture, so that this is installed nice and secure. The cutout section then needs to be re-laminated back into the main form and made good before painting. Before this whole process started, Aidan gave an assembly lecture at the school and some smaller class workshops. As well as his usual presentations of what it takes to run a small business and what it required of him in the early days compared to where he is now, he also bounced ideas around with the students as to the purpose of sculpture. They discussed the intentions behind it, what art makes you think or feel and, in this case, what a sculpture might represent. With everything nearing completion here in the studio, it's time to invite David and his teachers down to the workshop to see his concept now being brought off of the page. We'd like to thank all of the teachers and the staff at the De La Salle School for their support with this project, going ahead with the competition and commissioning something to be fabricated, and of course to David himself for a fantastic concept. 
as well as this being a physical representation on site, we hope that this video helps serve as a digital memoir of your contribution to De La Salle and the work that went on behind the scenes in its creation. Yeah, go on. Hello, David. <laughs> good concept. <laughs> oh, perfect. Very good. And here we have Liam. He's working on the uh, school trophy. Just really polishing out this and making sure there's no little uh, bubbles or imperfections, the best we can. And, as, and then we'll protect the base, and then we'll get on with the rest of the sculpture later. Isn't that right, Liam? Yeah. Yeah. The sculpture has had a spray artwork of blue transitioning up into the white and the star has had a red oxide coating and a gold leaf finish on the top. Everything has had a gloss lacquer finish to really give it that high shine and to weather protect the artwork. A few finishing touches are being added, like some vinyl lettering being applied around the base, and then it's off to the De La Salle School in Basildon. We've done work with our local council and a few local businesses, but it's great to be working with young minds in local schools as well. Thanks once again to all of the members of staff at the De La Salle School that made this project happen, and we hope that David's concept sculpture is enjoyed for a long time in the future. We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel at home, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos, we love having you guys on board, and if you'd like to support our family run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.